three, two, one. Good morning, esteemed members of the audience. My name is Scott Kim, and I'm here to present you my final AP research presentation titled Yemeni Asylum Seekers, a Perception Study. In regards to the presentation, I will first explain to you my research question, then my topic rationale, literature review and its theories and its findings, research gap and significance, methodology and its quantitative and its limitations, results in data analysis, and finally discussion and the implication of my research. My research question is, to what extent does the perception of Yemeni asylum seekers and refugees differ between local international school parents and local international school teachers? Ultimately, the goal of my research to, was to identify a difference between the local international school parents and local international school teachers. So I will be referring to the term asylum seekers and refugees frequently throughout this presentation. And by definition, an asylum seeker is a term used to describe someone who is seeking international protection but whose claim for refugee status has not yet been determined. A refugee refers to a person who is unable to return to his or her home country due to persecution, due to fear of persecution. And, reg and in regards to the legal status, a refugee lies between a simple migrant and a, and a full-on citizenship. And in regards to why I have chosen this topic, initially I interacted with Yemeni asylum seekers through a redistribution project of clothes. And second, I also interacted with asylum seekers through a model United Nations conference, and I was able to expose to concepts of global citizenship and international relations. And this naturally led me to follow up on current events related to Yemeni asylum seekers. And in regards to my historical context, initially in 1951, the United Nations ratifies a refugee convention and protocol relating to the status of refugees. And at the late 1990s, South Korea joins the refugee convention as a signatory. And in early 2000s, Jeju first initiates its visa waiver program, which allows foreigners to enter the island of Jeju without a visa. And in 2014, due to ages of disruptions in the political system, the Yemeni civil war erupts, and in 2016, the first Yemenis arrive at the island of Jeju to request refugee status. And in 2018, about 500 refugees, 500 Yemeni asylum seekers arrive at the island of Jeju, which results in spark debates relating to the acceptance or rejection of Yemeni asylum seekers. Now in regards to my letter to review, I will explain to you my fundamental theoretical framework that I employ throughout my research paper. This theory is titled Intergroup Threat Theory and was developed by Stefan and Stefan from the late 1990s and it was continuously modified until the early 2000s. Initially, it had four parts. However, it was later researched that the simple two-part components can still represent the entire prejudicial attitude. Now, the first component is called the realistic threat. Realistic threats refers to threats that are tangible, such as economic threats. And symbolic threats refers to threats that are more intangible relating to culture, language, or tradition. Now, this is my seminal paper that I have referred to throughout my research. It's titled Attitude Towards Refugees, The Dark Side of Prejudice in Australia and was published in the Australian Psychological Society. This research paper also employs the intergroup threat theory to, uh, to measure the prejudice the Australian university students felt towards the refugees. Now, then what constitutes this research gap? What makes this research significant? First of all, there's a lack of comparative perception research on refugees. While there are multiple research, researches that target a certain ethnic group or target a, so, a certain community, there is, there is not a comparative perception research that compares two different ethnicities or two different populations. The second research gap is the lack of perception research targeting populations are on Jeju. While there are multiple public opinion polls that are targeting the entire nation of South Korea, that are not, there are none that focus directly in communities of Jeju Island, which is, which is relatively significant because the Yemeni asylum seekers have arrived on the island of Jeju. And the third gap is the prevalence of solution-based research. While multiple researches focus simply on solutions and focus simply on the perception polls of Yemeni refugees, there are not much that focus specifically on an academic theory, which is why I employed the intergroup threat theory to focus my research. In regards to my methodology, I initially intended to perform a mixed method methodology in its both quantitative and qualitative aspects. 
However, due to time limitations and factors of COVID-19, I cannot reach out to survey respondents to conduct a 30-minute interview. And because of this, I focused on the quantitative aspect of my research. In regards to the quantitative aspects and samples that I have conducted, firstly, in regards to school parents, I have, sent, I have received 50 survey entries from the school parents, and the limitations of this number will be explained later. And in regards to the school faculty, the entire faculty member from pre-K of pre-K to the high school were uh, sent to surveys, and about 50 plus survey entries were again received. Now in regards to the components of my questionnaire, the first two components are the intergroup threat theory, which I explained earlier, composing of realistic and symbolic threats. The third component is the Bogart social distance scale. This was a social distance scale that was determined in regards to and to measure the social distance a certain population felt against migrants or other social groups. Initially, the Bogarda social distance scale was composed of seven part cumulative survey. However, because the results were too simplistic, I have decided to modify the Bogarda social distance scale into a, seven, into a six part, a seven point Likert scale. And the fourth component is the Marlowe Crone social desirability scale. Now, because this is a very local community, there we cannot we cannot exclude factors of respondents of the surveys being influenced by other members of the society, which is why I added the social desirability scale to measure whether a certain population or a certain survey respondent was answering in another in a specific manner. And some questionnaire examples of realistic threats include refugees get more than they contribute, refugees have increased the tax burden on the host country. So again, these threats refer to very tangible economic threats. While symbolic threat refers to, and some examples of symbolic threat are refugee intake is undermining the host country's culture, refugees should not have to accept the host country's ways, and some of, some of these questions again refer to culture, language, and traditions, very symbolic forms of threats. Now these are the summary of my results in regards to realistic and so, sim, symbolic threats. The blue is represented by parents and the, and the, and the red represents faculty. There's a consistent three-point Likert scale difference between the survey average for the faculty and the parents. The realistic threat is, if the value of realistic threat is lower, then that means that the survey respondents answered in a negative attitude, while if the value is higher, this represents that a certain population responded in a more positive way for the questions. And the average was taken and the faculty maintained a consistent average of 8.47, while the parents 5.24, and the parents for the symbolic threat 4.43 and faculty 7.01. And these are the summary of the results for the Bogart social distance scale. Again, the perfect point to achieve in this social distance scale was six points, and the faculty achieved the point of for about 5.93, an average of 5.93, and the parents an average of 3.20. And one interesting statistical variable to mention in this part of the research is the Standard deviation for the faculty seen in the Bogart social distance scale was about 0 0.20. This indicates that there may be some sort of social desirability acting on this population because their, the population is very local, tight-knit, especially for the faculty living in this community. Now more about the demographics of the survey, 100% of them had, 100% of the faculty had bachelor's degrees or higher. 80% for 80% of them, South Korea was their second or third country living abroad, and 3.5% of the faculty identified themselves as, as right wing, which indicates that the majority of the population are liberal or left wing. For the parents, 98% of them are South Koreans, 82% has bachelor's degrees or higher, and 6% identified as left wing, which means that the majority of the population are right wing or conservatives. And these are the summary of results in regards to the Marlowe Crone social desirability scale. The, fa the faculty average was 6.32, while the parent average was about 6.28. There's not much of a negligible difference here, but again, I will mention the limitations of this data analysis later in the limitation section. Now, this is the ultimate conclusion of my research. Local international school parents feel higher realistic threat, symbolic threat, and social distance towards refugees and are less willing to incorporate Yemeni asylum seekers or refugees within their society, while the local international school faculty were more willing to accept Yemeni asylum seekers into their society. Now, these are the limitations of my research. 
Initially, I intend to compare populations of the United States and populations from South Korea. However, due to economic limitations and time limitations, I cannot sample appropriately from both the United States and South Korea, which may be focused on a local level, which there are implications as well on a local communal level. And there were also numerous variables that may contribute to such a social science research, such as life, money, and the background in which how they were raised. Thus, it is really hard, thus it is nearly impossible to isolate a single variable why a survey respondent was answering in such a manner. My second limitation is the limitation on my statistical background. Initially, for the Bogart social distance scale, you cannot predict how much a population was socially desirable without the coefficient correlation calculation for the Pearson R variable. However, due to limitations in my statistical background, I could not perform such correlational calculations while I had to focus simply on the average of the social desirability. The second limitation is my survey availability. Initially, I intended on surveying much more of the parents. However, the survey, however, I could not send out my survey directly personally to the parents because these parents were again working and had less interactions with myself. And due to these reasons, I had to send out surveys to only about 50 parents. However, because there are parents who are residing in Seoul or other parts of South Korea, I could focus more, I could, I surveyed less populations to focus more on parents who are residing in the island of Jeju and in this local community. And before I move into explaining my implication, I would like to explain to you another part of my seminal paper. The seminal paper is titled The Challenges and Solutions on Refugee Policy in Korea, and it was published in the Journal of Policy Development. And the author of this research paper consist consistently argues that there is a lack of social welfare policy framework established in South Korea in regards to refugees and thus, thus deplores the South Korean, South Korean government and the society to modify its social welfare policies, such as refugee children education or refugee access to hospitals to better integrate them into society and to better fit them into international norms. And this is the implication of my research. Kim Sung-in, the previous Secretary General of the Nansen Refugee Rights Center, argued our legal basis and system for the protection of refugees must be established by the local government, in this context, Jeju, and then proposed to the central government. Thus, for the local government to move and initiate certain social welfare policies for refugees, it is important to observe the perception rates of the, pop of the local population, which many multiple researchers have not done previously. Other implications lie in the importance of comparatively observing perception of forced migrants in the age of globalization, as this, as the arrival of Yanni asylum seeker is just the start in the age of globalization. And second, to advise international schools in understanding the possible differences in perception between faculty and parents, as research could possibly impact the curriculum development of international schools in courses such as history. Now, some further research qu questions that I had throughout my paper relate to, are we making a refugee crisis? There are multiple interviews made by the refugees in that the refugee crisis was fabricated by the media, and this connects to the second research inquiry, impact on the role of biased media. Multiple literature review that I have referred to, referred back to the role of media in which it selectively reported certain cases of Yemeni refugees, and because of this has impacted the perception of Yemeni asylum seekers consistently throughout the age. So these are the ways I could possibly venture in in my future research increase. And these are my citation and thank you. Yay. What was one obstacle or challenge you encountered while implementing your research method and how did you address it? Again, the initial research um, limitation that I encountered was first, the initially I intended to conduct a mixed method study in which I combined, combined both the quantitative aspects and the qualitative aspects. The qualitative aspect would have composed of a 30-minute interview on the survey respondent. However, I could not conduct this because, COVID, because of COVID-19 and time limitations. And instead of that, I added an additional component into my quantitative portion, which includes the Bogart social distance scale. So that was one of the ways in which I modified my research methodology. But in addition to that, I had trouble sending out survey entries to the parents because I did not have the contact of the parents directly. 
And so because of that, I have to reach out through various mediums, um, through my friends, and attempted to do so through the school. And I have received about 50 survey entries in, in that as well. Thank you. Second question is, Which of the various perspectives you explored was the most difficult for you to incorporate into your research inquiry and why? An additional limitation to my research was the fact that there was less availability of literature review in the, in the area of Yemeni asylum seekers. For example, because the Yemeni asylum seeker issue was brought, brought aboard in the late, late 2000, 2018, there are not much literature review regarding the perception of Yemeni asylum seekers or a role the social policy plays in the Yemeni asylum seekers. And because most of them, most of the researchers were pro uh, Yemeni asylum seekers and have deplored and have implored the uh, local government to modify its social policy, I had trouble finding various perspectives to incorporate in my research. However, some of the research that I saw in regards to the Korean historical development in regards to Islamophobia or the social integration of people with different religious religious beliefs, um, those research papers indicated that it is almost inevitable that South Korea has such a perception towards uh, Islam, Islamic people or people with other religious beliefs. So those were the various per perspectives I have incorporated in my research. But in regards to the perspectives of inquiry, I also had trouble integrating um, per perspectives from economic perspectives because these, this was a social science research and I had trouble incorporating more of the technical aspects of economy. Yeah. And our uh, last question, we have a good three minutes, so we have plenty of time here, is what was one obstacle you encountered while implementing your research method and how did you address it? Oh, sorry, no, that's not it. <laughs> this is the final question. Yep. Uh, if you could revisit the research process, what would you do differently? Would you choose a different area of inquiry? And if so, why? If you would choose the same research question, what different methods or approaches would you use? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, if you could revisit the research process, what would you do differently? Would you choose a different area of inquiry? And if so, why? Or if you would choose the same research question, what different methods or approaches would you use? Uh, there was a literature review that I uh, that I looked at, which regards which was a research in regards to Yemeni Assam seeker perception through a qualitative model, and this time it was a process that was employed. The process that was employed was called topic modeling. So it looked at the role of biased media and how much certain words appeared in these biased media, in regards that shaped the perception towards Yemeni Assam seekers. So if I had more time, or if I could go back to change a few of my research methodology. I would most definitely choose to uh, use topic modeling to examine the Yemeni asylum seeker perception at the Jeju level instead of conducting a simple perception research specifically in the local community of Jeju Island. And in addition to that, I also had limitations in sending out these survey entries to the parents, so much so that I was spending almost all of my weekends trying to contact my friends and asking their friends, asking my friends to ask my friends to ask their parents to fill out this research survey. So in regards to that, I would most likely next time attempt to research the difference in the perception of Yemeni asylum seekers in the students, in the student body, and compare that to the level of perception in regards to the faculty. So that would, that would be the way I would venture in next time if I could do such a research again. All right, and that's 19 minutes and five seconds, so thank you. Thank you.